Yes. All right. Uh, thank you, MC Lady Blue. Thank you, Ella Baker Center for Human Rights. Uh, thank you, uh, Toy uh, Massey. I'd never heard of a nuclear engineer before. And then I realized, oh, you're from Wakanda. And it all made sense. It's actually a real place. You're basically Shuri. And I bow down to your wisdom and your science and we'll do whatever you ask of me. Thank you very, very much. Also, uh, be remiss if I didn't thank Zoom for bringing us all together, because uh, that's what Zoom does. We literally couldn't do any of this without Zoom. Like no happy hours, no church, no family reunions, no city hall convenings. It's a lot of stress and none of us signed up for this. I don't think Zoom signed up for this. Uh, it's the one thing holding our pseudo democracy together. It does make me a little suspicious, like how come Zoom never crashes or goes down? How were they so prepared? What did they know? Uh, and when did they know it? When this is all over, we should have a, a series of hearings just to understand why Zoom is so good at, at Zooming during a pandemic when everything else is literally falling apart around us. But Zoom's just like, we got this, we got y'all, literally. Uh, all of y'all, we got you. Uh, this week has been a lot. I mean, there's some stuff going on. Uh, the almost made it, almost made it to Friday and then got the news that uh, the healthiest, strongest, most conscientious, uh, humane and human president that this country has ever had since Abraham Jesus Washington, uh, somehow, uh, despite all efforts, contracted the Rona. I don't get it. I don't get it because this dude has been taking daily injections of bleach as he advised us to do. Uh, he's been staring directly into the sun for its ultraviolet properties. You know, he's been bathing in hydroxychloroquine, uh, which doesn't do anything. And, and so I, I don't, I don't, I just, I don't get how he gets it. It, it just doesn't add up to me. And obviously we're all praying um, for his recovery. Because uh, 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 I want for this person, uh, this occupant of the White House, a very long life, like a long, healthy, fully conscious existence so that he is able to bear witness uh, to the most embarrassing, devastating landslide in electoral history uh, in the history of any democracy that's ever existed. I want that for him. You know, I want that compassionate witnessing uh, for this being. Uh, I want him to be around long enough to be uh, deposed and prosecuted and sentenced and compassionately incarcerated. You know, we're, I know we're in a restorative justice circle here with Night Out for Safety and Liberation. And I do believe it is possible to compassionately uh, hold this person accountable while holding him in community, specifically the community at Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary, um, without any access to digital communications technology or the use of the hole in his face for uh, audio expression. I think that's just the most loving hug I could imagine, like a jacket that he could live in, like a, just a, a compassion jacket that he could just be mm, just loving on himself. And obviously lots of entertainment. You know, we want a, uh, an educational reform. You know, I'm very reform minded. I think folks who uh, have, have violated our various norms and laws, have deserve an opportunity. I'm very big on a second chance. So, you know, he would have an educational program uh, consisting exclusively of videos uh, of President Barack Obama's speeches on an infinite loop, uh, but only in Spanish, only in Spanish, with subtitles in Creole, of course. Um, and so he'd just have a lot of time to contemplate uh, and think about, you know, his path back, his, uh, his path back to, um, to society. You know, if, if he's so lucky, if we're so lucky. Chris Christie got the got the Rona too, and I feel bad uh, because no one cares. Uh, literally, no, people are, are like more concerned about Kellyanne Conway than Chris Christie. And it's very sad because he, he worked so hard, uh, the former governor of New Jersey, to um, fit his body in the buttocks of, of the current president. He worked very hard on that. He... He trained, he prepared him for that uh, excuse for a debate that we all uh, were assaulted by earlier this week. Chris Christie put in literal seconds of his life to coach uh, the rabid, simian, feces-throwing, violator of everything we hold dear uh, on just how to be himself. And so after all the work that Chris Christie put in to try to right the ship 
uh, of the current president for him to catch the Rona too. And then nobody care is just really, I feel for him. And again, compassion, love, just like so much loving on Chris Christie. Uh, this week has been so intense that we did not get the benefit of full attention, reflection, and potential enjoyment of the Melania tapes. I feel cheated. I feel cheated because the staffer of the first lady put in a lot of work. I mean, Omarosa put in work and we got the full benefit of her tapes. We we got books. She dropped a series like, like an early rapper. You know, she had a whole strategy. And the Melania tapes, she out here, she was just like, I hate kids and I hate Christmas. And we got 11 seconds to, you know, absorb that before, you know, the headlines changed to their diagnosis. It's just, it's not fair. The taxes dropped this week. Did do anybody remember that? Nope. Doesn't matter. It's all gone. And so we're in this presidential campaign mode. And I don't understand. I feel a little... Feel a little sympathy for the president because he's running on keeping America safe. I don't know how you keep America safe. You can't even keep your White House safe. You can't even keep your wife safe. You can't even keep yourself safe. That's just, it's just awkward. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot coming at us. There's a lot coming at us and I'm having a hard time keeping it straight. 2020, I, I don't think we should have the year 2021. I think the year 2021 should just be catching up on everything we missed in 2020. The, we almost went to war with Iran. That was this year. You remember that? You probably don't remember that, that day when we almost went to war with Iran. Uh, we impeached a dude. We impeached the president of the United States. I literally forgot that. I was walking around this week recovering from, I don't know, the latest assault of information and doubts foisted upon our very able-bodied postal service. And I was like, oh, that's right. Impeachment is a real thing that happened. So 2021 should just be like a makeup year where we just get to study and absorb and experience the things we miss. Things like Quibi. Y'all, <laughs> Quibi is a whole thing that happened this year. And I have my doubts. It's like yet another streaming service. But is it? And I found myself wondering, like, is Quibi real or is it just like a collective fever dream? And, you know, everything that I experienced that's a little off, I'm like, maybe I have coronavirus. I was talking to my doctor and they're like, what are your symptoms? I'm like, well, I had a little scratchiness in my throat, a sense of fatigue, a fear that my government's trying to kill me for the past 400 years. And I think there's a new streaming service that only works on your cell phone called Quibi. And they're like, yo, you believe in Quibi? We got to get a test right away. So that allegedly happened this year. It, it, it's been too much. We've all been through a lot, particularly the people in this room where it happens right now. And I just want to express a, a level of connectedness uh, to you all doing this real work, um, especially uh, in, in a welcoming, loving sense, uh, the, the newly awakened uh, white people of America who've decided that race exists. It's, it's been huge. It's something I've worked toward a lot of my life. And, and many generations, our ancestors have been looking forward to this moment where white people acknowledge race. I'm like, oh, finally, we got it, it's happening. And I'm like, oh dear God, it's happening. White people are engaging in race. They are, white people in America engaging in race are about as prepared as the Trump administration was for COVID-19. Like they're running out of supplies, it's crazy. It was easier to get an N95 off of Amazon than a copy of White Fragility for a while there. It was touch and go. Amazon was like, you know, due to spikeness in woke demands, our distribution centers cannot keep up and we're running a little light. Brothers out in the streets and gentrifying neighborhoods with trench coats talking about, yo, I got that. So you want to talk about race? I got that new Ibram X Kendi hotness. Yo, you give me some face shields or a hundred dollars, whatever you got, I got you. It was wild. I'm walking around my neighborhood in Highland Park, Los Angeles, and I know the white neighbors because of their Black Lives Matter and end white silence lawn signs. That has never happened before. That, that, that threw me for a loop. And the thing I really didn't see coming, oh my goodness, NASCAR canceled the Confederate flag. I literally didn't know it was possible to drive in a circle at over 100 miles per hour 
and not have a Confederate flag on your hood. I thought it was a law of physics. I thought it was like nuclear physical law, something Toy Massey probably has studied at Wakanda University, that the only way you could engage in activity is if you had the Dukes of Hazzard drone on your car. Apparently not. I didn't see Mitt Romney out in these streets saying Black Lives Matter. Mitt Romney, who tried to keep our black president away from us. You remember that? That's literally how I think about Mitt Romney. And he out here on Black Lives Matter Plaza saying, I believe Black Lives Matter. That was a... Uh, that was unexpected. That was very unexpected. The, the, the last thing I'll, I'll say, because I want to leave space for the rest of this beautiful program, and it's a real honest confession. Uh, I've been uh, auditioning uh, backup nations. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the USA. And my people are from here from as far back as can be recorded. I don't think you can be more American than being owned by America. So woohoo, America first. And I think like my reluctance to leave the nation is based on this sense of obligation to the people that allowed me to be here. I'm like, my ancestors bled in these streets and in these fields so that I might be able to bleed in these streets and in these fields. Maybe my ancestors just want me to be free and happy or at least freer and happier. So I'm looking at Europe like, yo, I know you're white supremacist too, but you have universal healthcare. And Healthcare helps the white supremacy go down. Like, it's just different. It's, I'm looking at the continent. I have a Nigerian name. I'm not really Nigerian, but they don't have to know that. You know what I'm saying? And I'll show my 23andMe receipts. Maybe they can let me in. How does one apply? How does one friend a nation? Can you friend a whole nation on Facebook? Is there an application? Is it like Tinder? Do you swipe a certain direction? And the nation has thrown me for the biggest loot, New Zealand. I, I, I feel like New Zealand is trolling us. I feel like their effective national leadership and imperfect but deeper acknowledgement of the indigenous nations that preceded their national existence, I feel like they're just rubbing our nose in it, and especially this year with Jacinda Ardern. I don't, I don't get what's up with this prime minister. She out here effectively managing mass shootings. They just, they just handled it. She's like Olivia Pope with a funky accent. I don't understand. They crush COVID. They're having rugby matches again. I don't even know what that is, but they're having them. And she given a press conference in the middle of an earthquake. Oh, it seems we're having a bit of a shake here. That's not even the right accent. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm a little, you know, basic on that. But the point is she's in the middle of a press conference, everything's shaking and she's Fine, everything seems to be okay. We have solid infrastructure because we believe in the commons and have made an investment that protects the many, not just the few. Okay. And to top it all off, New Zealand's not even real. You realize it's just the set of Lord of the Rings? Like New Zealand is a soundstage. It's white Wakanda. It doesn't, how are we getting our butts handed to us by a set? So I'm, I'm looking into backup nations, but while I'm here, I will join you all in this struggle to make this place uh, more welcoming, more safe uh, for all of us. Thank you for having me be a part of this program. My name is Baratunde Thurston. Peace.